Jeremiah chapter 12. Righteous art thou, O Lord, when I plead with thee. Yet let me talk with thee of thy judgments. Wherefore does the way the wicked man prosper? Wherefore of all thy happy, all they happy that dwell that dwell very treacherously? Well, Jeremiah is going to speak to the Lord about something that's on his mind. Thou hast planted them, that's the wicked people. Yea, they have taken root. They grow, yea, they bring forth fruit. Thou art near in their mouth and far from their reign. God is not in control of their life. And what Jeremiah is asking the Lord here is really a simple question. Is Lord, I look at all these wicked people and they fare well. If you're a righteous, holy God, why is this so? Why are these people, they do good, they got all the money, they got all the business, they rule us who, who love you and seek you, and they don't have the problems that we have. And that is the question of time. That is the question of the book of Job. Why did the suffer? I mean, why did the righteous suffer? And he says, talk with thee of thy judgments. And what one must realize is, when the end of time is all gone, the books will be open. And every man will be judged. Every man will be sentenced. And for these that do evil, though they enjoyed the pleasures of sins for a season, Hebrews 11, their end is torments, fire, no God. But thou, O Lord, knowest me. Thou hast seen me and tried my heart. And he's comparing his life with those that are wicked. God, the people of Antioch are supposed to be your people, your priests. They want to kill me. We're talking about the ones of Antioch in chapter 11. Lord, why are these people living that want to kill me? And you've seen me. you tried me. you tried my heart. Pull them out like sheep for slaughter. And prepare them for the day of slaughter. He's talking about those of Antioch. His own hometown. The beasts are consumed in the birds. Because they said, he shall not see our last days. And in chapter 18 and 20, it will happen. It's not quick enough for Jeremiah. These people have brought Jeremiah down. His own home folks. And you got to realize... The people who give you the hardest time in your Christian walk are your own home folks. You gotta understand where God says, if a man hate not his father, his mother, his sister, his brother, and his kin folks, you cannot be his disciple. Jeremiah is a disciple of, of God. How much more hatred can you get? They are not doing right. They want to kill Jeremiah, not because of Jeremiah, but because of the word of God. And the Lord answers, If thou hast run with the footmen, and they have wearied thee, then how canst thou contend with the horses? Jeremiah if you're going to go against the nation, if you're going to go against the kings, Jeremiah 1, and your own hometown wearies you, you're not going to win the battle.
That's a hard statement by God. God is telling, listen, don't fret. The footmen are slow. The horses are faster. Don't let these people weary you. Jeremiah, you're going to stand before the king. Telling you, there's a danger of family and friends that don't serve God and don't do it right. And you can end up as a washed up Christian. I have seen it over and over and over. And it usually begins with family picnics. You skip out Sunday for a family picnic, family outing. And you don't want to listen to me. I can give you family names, last names, or washed up. And if in the land of peace, and that's peace, wherein thou treadest, trust this, excuse me, the land of peace, wherein thou trustest, or here you are, Jeremiah, your peace, it's still, and they weary thee. Jeremiah, the battle hasn't started yet. You think your own hometown's going to be mad at you? You think that's a problem? You think that's it? You think the city of Norwich is going to try to shut you down? You think that NFA is going to try to stop you from uh, holding signs and telling their students about Jesus Christ? You think being called before the chief chief of police? You think that's going to stop you? You think a church going against you is going to stop you? Man, I'm going to move you on and you're going to deal with bigger and more things. That's still, that's peace. And that's a weariness. Then how wilt thou do in the swelling of the Jordan? And that's a stormy. That's a swift current. Man, you're going to have horses of, of, of fastness. And you're going to have the swelling of, of Jordan stormy. Don't quit now. But if you can't handle it, quit. Because it's only going to get worse. All they live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Just better get to know that and, and live with that fact. And a Christian life is one of the things I tell the men at prison. I tell them over and over, it is not an easy life. You're going to get bombarded from everywhere around, including your own self and your flesh. It's a war. That's why God gives you armor. He gave you a suit of armor. He didn't give you a pillow and sheets. If you go around in a nice, comfortable, air-conditioned, and heated building, what would Jesus do? He slept out in the mountains. That's what he did. For even thy brethren, that's the men of Antioch, and the house of thy father, your family. Even they have dwelt treacherously with thee. Yea, they have called a multitude after thee. Nice family. Believe them not. Though they speak fair words unto thee, they are the enemy within. And they'll try anything they can to get you to quit. And if you don't want to adhere to the Bible, you will be a quitter. 
and you will be a loser. Just like God told Jeremiah. Jeremiah is 52 chapters long. We haven't got one quarter of the book yet. And we're dealing with a weariness of the man of God. And he hasn't even begun to fall. God told him in Jeremiah chapter 1, you're going to deal with kings, you're going to deal with nations. And he's having a hard time with his family and his hometown. I have forsaken my house. I have left my heritage. I have given the de dearly beloved of my soul unto the hand of her enemies. Standing alone. He's giving it up. My heritage is unto me as a lion. That's the king of the life, king of all the beasts in the forest. It cries out against me. Therefore have I hated it. Here's a roaring lion, an enemy of men. My heritage is unto me as a speckled bird. It stands out among all the other birds. You'll have a white bird, gray bird, black bird, and here's this one that's all spotted. That one will stand out. The birds round about are against her. Come ye, assemble ye all the beasts of the field, come to devour. I got a lion against me and I got all the birds against me. I stand out. I'm marked by following God. Never mind the drug addicts and alcoholics and all the losers that are in the family. You're the one that's marked. And I've heard of cases of people personally I know who has gotten someone in their family, an alcoholic or a druggist, saved. Got them out of the alcohol. Got them out of the drugs. And their own parents of the person that got saved and got out of that got angry. Because now this person is following Jesus. I know the names personally. People are upset because you draw them to Jesus Christ rather than drawing you away from Jesus. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They're supposed to help the vineyard. They have trotted down my portion underfoot. They have stepped on what they weren't supposed to step on. They are taking their feet off the path. Because where the path is, there, there is no plants. You don't plant your vegetation in the, in the footpath. So when you go walking in the garden, that your foot will step on the plant. If they are trodden the, the plants underfoot, they are walking where they're not supposed to be walking. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. Wilderness is where there's no nothing to grow. No resources to grow. They have made it desolate. And become desolate it mourneth unto me. The whole land is made desolate. Because no man layeth the heart. Self-centered. Desolate. There's nothing there. The spoilers are come upon all the high places through the wilderness. 
for the sword of the Lord shall devour from the one end to the from one end of the land even to the other uh, other end of the land. No flesh shall have peace. When God is against you, because you're trying to destroy His work, though you think they're prospering. Listen, those people that are against us down at the farmer's market, there is no peace. I guarantee the words that we preach and the tracts that we give out, that they break into their heart often in their life. They probably they'll hear something on the news about a church or something like that, and probably maybe we come into mind. They'll go to work and there's someone that's saved and you know, you know this loud mouth, blah 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 down. There is no peace save the Lord unto the wicked. They have sown wheat. That was what they're supposed to sow. But shall reap thorns. That's not. You don't plant wheat and get thorns. But that is the curse of the earth, Genesis chapter 3. You have thorns and weeds, but they have planted wheat. They have put themselves to pain. Suffering. But they shall not profit. And this is, this is penance. You know, I'm going to mar myself. I'm going to do things to my body for, for salvation. The monks do it. The Roman Catholics in, in the island nations do it. They'll go up and down the stairs on glass. They're bloody and they're, they're just a puddle of goo on their legs. And yet the Lord will say to them in that day, Depart from me, I never knew you. But Lord, didn't I break my legs open? I never knew you. Lord, didn't I cut myself? Yeah, that was the instruments of Baal. And was that first king, second king? They're the ones that cut themselves to get their God to listen. They shall be ashamed of your revenues, money, because of the fierce anger of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord against all my evil neighbors. And these are nations that God uses to punish Israel. That touch the inheritance which I have caused my people Israel to inherit. This will be Babylon. This will be Rome. This will be Germany. Behold, I will pluck them out of their land. And pluck out the house of Judah from among them. You know, when you pluck something out, you don't put it back in. When you pluck feathers out of a bird, you don't, you don't put them back. And shall come to pass after that, I have plucked them out. I will return and have compassion on them. And will bring them again, every man to his heritage. And every man into his land. There's Judah. There's Israel. I'll pluck them out too, but I'm going to bring them back. So God's going to defy plucking. Because he can defy, can defy plucking. You take a duck, chicken, or goose and defeather them, you can't put the feathers back on them. Yet God can. It's the reverse of that, that uh, coin-operated claw game that you, you see in some places. Instead of putting your money in there, you, you take a, a present out, try to catch something, and you get it. It's God putting things into the machine. And it shall come to pass, if they will diligently learn the ways of my people... Well, my people, he's not talking about the Jews. He's talking about those people who are not Jews.
The show comes fast and they will diligently learn the ways of my people to swear by my name. That the Lord liveth as they taught my people to swear by Baal. Also, they taught Israel how to worship Baal, and Baal was the object of chapter 11. See, Jeremiah asked a question about all those people that dealt with in chapter 11, and God answers them. They're going to be plucked out. The Gentiles will be plucked out. The men of Antioch will be plucked out. But there are going to be some Jews and there are going to be some of the Gentiles I will put back. And if they will do the way of God, they shall be built in the midst of my people. There will be Gentiles that will get right. There were Gentiles that came to the Lord Jesus Christ and God answered their prayer. Even after one time, Jesus, you know, tell her go away. And he ended up saving her daughter, I believe it was. There were Gentiles that came to Jesus and they were saved. How many Gentiles did Paul witness to being handcuffed to him or being shackled to him in, the, in jails? Cornelius was a Gentile that got right. The Ethiopian eunuch was a Gentile that got right. All over the book of Acts and Romans and, and Corinthians, you see names of people, Gentiles, who got right. But if they will not obey, if God puts them, puts them in the land and they don't obey, I will utterly pluck up and destroy that nation, saith the Lord. Pluck them back out. So there's going to be a chance that God's going to bring these nations back in to see what they're going to do. And if they do do right, great. And if they don't, go on. That's it. You've had your chance. And the lesson that you, if you learn through the Bible and study is you're not to fret not of the unrighteous people. They're going to have their judgment and they're going to be seen as losers. They may be winners now, but they're going to be losers in the eyes of God. There's a warning to Jeremiah about the family. Because guess what? Bigger and more men of authority in Jeremiah's life. He's going to come before the king, and the king has more authority than a bunch of men in the, in the town. How often have you heard of Anah in the Bible? Who are they? But Jeremiah, when you stand before the king and he has authority and puts you in jail, puts you in the pit, and calls out a life sentence upon you. And there's going to be a king that's going to stand before Jeremiah. And he's going to be a wimpy king. And he's afraid of the people. Keep serving the Lord like Paul did. Don't be like a Demas and go back. And you never hear a Demas again. Mark went back. Paul got angry with him. Later on, you find out about Paul when he, came, I mean, about Mark when he came back. Paul said, "Listen, this guy is—he's credible for the service. Take him." You never hear about Demas again. Keep serving. Keep going.